In other news tonight, equipping Baltimore City police officers with body cameras. That's the goal of a council member who introduced a bill tonight that would eventually require all officers to wear the devices. 11 News reporter Kai Reed joins us live from downtown at City Hall tonight with more details. Kai? Well, Stan, this bill is in its earliest stage. It was just introduced to city council members tonight, but this whole discussion about police officers wearing body cameras isn't new. The sponsors of the police body camera bill say they started talking about the issue months before this video surfaced showing a city police officer punching a man repeatedly. I doubt if the officer knew he was being recorded. You know, I mean, you know, I doubt if he knew he was being recorded because if he knew he was being recorded, I don't think he would have done that. The investigation into that officer and what happened is ongoing, but the supporters of the proposed bill say that equipping city police with body cameras would be a way to protect citizens and police officers. If the bill passes, all newly hired patrol officers would be required to wear the devices immediately. All others would be phased in within one year. Officers in Laurel already use the body cameras. Police officials here estimate that they'd cost $7 million up front and $2 million in annual operating costs. Councilman Warren Branch compared that money to money paid out for potential lawsuits. I believe it's better to uh, place these camera phones on them, $4,000 a piece, which would come to about 20, than to look at the millions of dollars of costs for 20 people who may have done some wrong or misconduct out in the field. In a statement to 11 News about the proposed legislation, Mayor Stephanie Rawlings-Blake said in part, this is one of many proposals my administration is already exploring as part of a comprehensive review I called for following several public safety forums. Both the mayor and police commissioner have said that the cameras are part of an ongoing discussion, but cost, success in other cities, and privacy concerns for officers and citizens are a big part of the consideration. An ACLU official gave several examples. So it, an officer, when he or she isn't interacting with citizens and exercising his or her police power, should be able to have a private conversation, just like any of us would during the course of the day. And now, Bill Sponsor has told me that their discussions about the body cameras really picked up after the Tyrone West case. Members of West family were at the city council meeting tonight. Hearings on the proposed legislation are due to begin in mid-October. Reporting live at City Hall, Kai Reed, WBAL, TV 11 News. After a violent video involving a cop is released, there is a growing call for police body cameras. John Rydell is live from City Hall, where that debate is now before the city council. John. Well, Jennifer, as debate begins, some members of the city council say they'll be seeking advice from police in Laurel, and that's where those cameras are already in use. I've been employed with LPD for about seven years. You'd probably never notice it, the tiny camera attached to the officer's glasses. But in Laurel, police say those body cameras are already helping officers while increasing transparency. And it shows that these guys were actually doing exactly what they were trained and how they were trained to do it. And in light of this recently released video from a Baltimore City crime camera, there's growing support for a bill now before the city council to approve police body cameras here. I think this bill here not only serves the citizens in our district, but it also protects our police officers also. The bill would require all officers be equipped with digital audio and video recording devices. It's supported by the Democratic nominee for city state's attorney, Marilyn Mosby. The police are protected uh, against wrongful complaints, and then you'll have, you know, the citizens who may be protected from police misconduct. But the bill is very short on specifics. There's no word on how much it would cost the city to install body cameras, and there are no details on when they would be operational. Even supporters admit there are many questions left unanswered. I think the issue of privacy is a huge constitutional um, thing that we're coming up against. But City Councilwoman Helen Holton says there's a sense of urgency that something must be done now. I'd hate to see another incident occur that says, well, if we had this in place, when it's too late, when if I coulda, woulda, shoulda, is not in a position to help us. Well, Mayor Stephanie Rawlings-Blake says she supports that idea in principle, but she says she still has some concerns about privacy issues. We're live at City Hall, John Rydell, Fox 45 News. Well, it won't be like cops, but close. In order to make our city safer, there's an idea that's gaining a lot of support. How about 
if we put body cameras on our police officers. ABC 2 News' Catherine Hawley took our camera to City Hall tonight. Catherine? Jamie, it's a reality that could soon happen here in Baltimore. City Council introduced legislation tonight to add the small video cameras to the uniforms of Baltimore City officers. It's alarming video. Back in June, a police surveillance camera captured a city officer punching a man repeatedly at a bus stop. And now it could mean big changes for the department. City Council Bill 14-443, police equipment, audio, video, recording devices. Monday night, Baltimore City Council introduced legislation to arm officers with body cameras to record audio and video on the streets. Makes them, you know, be more aware of what they're doing and what they're saying. And it also protects citizens from being, you know, harassed by some of the officers. Chairman of the Public Safety Committee, Councilman Warren Branch, spearheaded the bill. We must listen to what our constituents would say, and they've been crying it for a long time. Now we finally have a chance for their voices to be heard. Some of those voices are from the family of Tyrone West. He died in police custody last July. Hopefully they'll pass it and it'll save someone else from the heartache that my family is going through. So that's what I hope. Experts argue the body cams can provide valuable evidence in court and cut back on brutality complaints. But the equipment also comes with controversy, especially dealing with the privacy of officers and citizens being taped. The video always going to be a recording. Is it only going to be on some of the time? What's the storage for it? Who gets copies of it? Is it open to the public? Is it open to the media? Is it open to just the defense attorneys? City leaders say they have been discussing the idea. The police commissioner and the mayor are exploring arming the force with the devices, but say the cameras are just a piece of what needs to be done to improve police accountability. I think it's important to have a comprehensive set of reforms to take seriously what we heard from our constituents and come back with a series or a set of uh, reforms that will help steer us in the right direction. I think if you just say, okay, body cams with nothing else, I think that's a band-aid and it's not really taking seriously uh, the concerns that were raised. Now, if the bill is passed, the cameras would be phased in over the course of a year, starting with new hires and then throughout the whole department. Councilman Branch says the equipment will cost between $250 to $1,000 for each camera. Catherine Hawley, ABC2 News. Five Baltimore City officers remain on paid administrative leave after an arrest involved hitting a man with a baton and using a stun gun. Last night, city police released video of the incident in question. The cell phone video starts after police say officers responded to a confrontation between Melba's patron, Jamar Kennedy, and a bouncer there. Kennedy was charged with assault of a police officer. Police Commissioner Anthony Batts used the video to bring up his desire to equip his police force with body cameras, offering what he says would be every possible angle in order to investigate the cases. Yeah, and police in Washington, D.C. are the latest now to begin wearing body cameras. A pilot program will be putting cameras on about 160 D.C. officers to start, but Baltimore City Mayor Stephanie Rawlings-Blake repeated today that there are obstacles of privacy concerns and cost. I've heard things like we can pay for it with the savings. I cannot go to a body cam shop with coupons and say, you know, after we get those savings, we will pay you. That's not how it works. And according to a bill introduced at Monday City Council meeting, the upfront cost for the program in Baltimore City would be around $7 million and $2 million every year for operating costs. Yeah, guys, we know the po five police officers involved were placed on administrative leave after that arrest of Kennedy in which a stun gun and a baton were used. Now, the cell phone video that police released uh, shows what happened before Kennedy was arrested uh, outside a bar early Tuesday morning. Now, Commissioner Anthony Batts has said there are some concerns that they're working to address with that proposal to require city officers to wear body cameras while they're on the job. The ACLU agrees with the commissioner that having those cameras will cut out a lot of confusion and misinformation in cases like this. Um, and also they can protect police from false accusations. But uh, if we're going to implement body cameras, it has to be done in a thoughtful way to ensure that they don't become a new invasion of privacy, a new surveillance tool, and a new investigatory tool. That would be totally counterproductive. 
Now, Roca says there would have to be some well-established rules and procedures that everyone, including the public, would have input in putting together. Now, the mayor also issued a statement today in response to this latest incident at Melba's and the body camera proposal. She says, quote, Anytime police use force, it's never pretty, and this video again reminded us of that. We were proactive in making sure this information was made available to the public because we're committed to more transparency and accountability in policing across Baltimore City. We will continue the extensive review that I ordered several weeks ago, which will develop a comprehensive set of reforms to address police misconduct and determine more transparent methods for policing, including the ramifications for police body cameras. A body camera can be a useful tool in determining all of the facts when situations like this occur, the mayor went on to say, and I look forward to acting in a comprehensive manner once our review is complete. Now, if passed, those cameras would be phased in uh, over the course of a year, starting with new hires and then moving on to the entire department. We're live in Baltimore, Katrina Bush, ABC2 News. Officer Vincent Kosum likely wouldn't have acted this way if he knew he was being recorded by surveillance video from above. He most certainly wouldn't have punched Colin Truss if a camera was part of his uniform. Those are the views of some of the members of the Baltimore City Council considering a bill calling for all Baltimore police officers to wear body cameras. Kelly, it is the latest technology in policing and body cameras are getting more and more play with departments around the country, but there is one force here in Maryland that already made the jump and have no designs of turning back. For the Laurel Police Department, the decision to outfit its officers with body cameras was a natural progression. It's just something that we understood. We were probably moving in that direction. Why not be able to get out in front of this, kind of take it and make it what we wanted it to be. And for two years, the small department has done just that, becoming a local authority of sorts on the new police technology, including having one of its more dramatic examples posted to YouTube by its body camera and stun gun manufacturer, Taser. Hand him the key. Here, a woman pulled over for a suspected DUI drives off from officers. Moments later, the woman crashes her car and police pursue her on foot. It does kind of show the actual use of the system, the benefits of the use of the system, uh, from what the person was saying in that particular case to the actions that the person took, along with the officer's actions. A dramatic stop that may help sell Taser's products, but also highlights the need for the technology. That woman that we see Tase threatened suit against your department. She did. And you gave that video to their lawyer, and then what we, happened? We actually passed that video along, and I don't think we've heard anything from that since. And that is one of the main benefits for police. Deputy Chief Brooks says his department is just now running the numbers, but anecdotally, civil suits and allegations of use of force against his officers is down significantly. But beyond efficiency is safety. Clip that on there. I'll run this down through my head. Officer Aaron Waddell has been suiting up with this camera since the department purchased them. Hook the cord up to it. And this is a magnetic clip. Yep. So it's right above your ear, the whole shift. Mm -hmm. Has the exact same point of view as my eyes. The battery and controller is worn on the belt. Tap it twice, and the camera starts to roll, including the 30 seconds prior. It becomes second nature, Waddell says, like here at this traffic stop along Route 1 in Laurel. All Laurel officers who wear the cameras are trained to ask for consent to record when there is a reasonable expectation of privacy. Good afternoon, Officer Waddell, Laurel Police. Have your license registration with you, sir? And when there isn't, the officer today. simply tells the citizen. Just to let you know you're being recorded audio and visual right now. It's an eye that doesn't blink, capturing an irrefutable record of Ground any and all citizen police interaction, police. Yeah. even as what is seemingly a normal stop got just a bit more tense. Watch out. Ma'am, ma'am, I'm going to need you to get back inside the vehicle. Close the vehicle up, please. I understand that, sir, but Supreme Court says anybody, anytime the traffic uh, stop is being conducted, everybody inside the vehicle is seized, nobody's free to go. Do you understand? All of it caught on police camera with no room for he said, she said, even though she was recording what he was recording while we were recording both. 
a police version of the record in an Insta video world and a tool that has bigger departments in the state asking questions. Has Baltimore City Police come to you and asked you about these cameras? We have had discussions with uh, officers from the Baltimore City Police Department and we just kind of let them know what we were doing. We talked about policy issues, cost of the systems, implementation. Uh, they were trying to understand what we're using them for. Now, the Baltimore Police Department continues to say while body cameras are in the commissioner's strategic plan, it is currently studying those privacy issues and running a cost analysis. Deputy Chief Brooks of Laurel tells us each camera costs his department about $600. The docking station and charging stations, which hold about six cameras each, cost upwards of $1,500. And then there is the cost of storing the video as well as the data. As with any new technology, the department says there was some apprehension at first from the union as there is here in Baltimore. But the FOP here in this city isn't necessarily against cameras, but urges caution and wants to figure out all the details before passing a law to require police to wear them. Now, so Brian, I know they're talking about phasing them in here in Baltimore if the laws pass. Are all the loyal officers equipped with the cameras? Well, they had 12 as uh, 12 cameras when we shot this story, and mm -hmm. but just today they announced, just this afternoon they announced the department got 20 more. So now it says the majority of their force can be outfitted. So are we talking about just patrolmen or are you detectives or who all for the, wearing them? Yeah, for the most part, it's it's patrolmen, but they say that they also use them in SWAT raids and for training. They say uh, cameras also help to provide more accurate police reports as there now is a video oh, no. record of all of this so they can go back and say oh that person stepped off the line when I was right. doing a DUI check at this step not that step and so they say that everything's more accurate this way. All right. Popping up all over the place after the whole Ferguson situation. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, Brian. You know, and also police in D.C., actually, they're going to be sporting their body cameras as part of a pilot program in the district. On October 1st, 165 officers in D.C. will all begin wearing cameras. During the six-month pilot program, each of the officers will test how the camera works at scenes, battery life, and video storage. The department will keep video for 90 days unless it is part of an ongoing investigation. Baltimore City Police just revealed yet another investigation into one of its officers' use of force last night. The city is tracking these cases with a map on its website in an effort to be more transparent. The red dots are use of force investigation locations. Baltimore Police lists 30 use of force investigations dating back to January 1st. All but two of those cases are still under investigation. In one of the closed cases, the officers were cleared. The second involved an officer who shot a man while off duty in Pennsylvania, and he has since resigned. Use of force can be anything from shooting a suspect to someone injured in a fall. Anytime any actions taken by an officer, it can result in serious injury or even death.